At this point is when I uh, would say approximately is where I had this terrific flash hit the air. My aircraft lit up the inside of my aircraft. And uh, I, I assumed, of course, at the time in a, in a split second that it was probably a P-51 fighter that it dove over my nose and that it was the sun's reflecting upon his bright wing surfaces that caused it. However, before I gathered my wits together, I looked way off here to the north, and then when I saw where the flash came from, it was a, an echelon formation of a very peculiar looking aircraft, and uh, they were rapidly approaching Mount Rainier, and it was at about this point when I got here, I could see their, their uh, tail surfaces, or the rear end of them, and, and the, second, uh, the second craft from the rear had a more or less crescent shape uh, look, and it had a hole in the center of it. And of course, I kept mulling in my mind, that's the damnedest looking airplane I ever saw. Arnold timed the craft as they sped between two mountain peaks almost 50 miles apart. I looked at my uh, sweep second hand on my 24 hour clock, and they had covered this distance of approximately 50 miles in a minute and 42 seconds. It is placing their speed at uh, approximately uh, 1,700 miles an hour, 1,781 it came out at, at that distance, uh, which was, of course, unheard of in 1947. He abandoned his search and landed. Later, he was besieged by reporters, and one of them asked him how the objects flew. I says, well, I tell you, they flew like, erratically like a, like a saucer would if, it, if you skipped it across the water. And, of course, then, all of a sudden, uh, the term flying disc and, and this type of thing, or crescent-shaped or whatnot, was completely dropped, and everybody started seeing flying saucers. And they've been seeing them ever since. 